Okay, thank you. So, uh, my presentation is entitled Bull Tank Milk uh, of Sartaja Eliza as a tool for quantification of milk production losses in dairy herds. So, the question is where do we stand? So, you will see this presentation is totally different from uh, those uh, regarding uh, molecular markers, for example. Um, so, uh, to rationally control uh, gastrointestinal nematode infection, uh, we want to make sure that we do not treat for nothing. So uh, there's uh, an important need for tools that correctly predict uh, the level of loss or the gain to be expected from treatment. In the particular case of uh, grazing dairy cows, we know that this infection can induce meal production losses. And there's a very easy to use uh, tool, the label on the field, uh, this is the Ossertagia ELISA, which measures the bull tank milk Ossertagia antibody level uh, with results expressed as optical density ratio uh, or DR. So does this tool do the job? The objective of my presentation is to provide some answers to this question based on the results obtained over the last 15 or 20 years. So initial work focusing on this Brutanknir Ostartagia ELISA showed significant negative statistical associations between ODR values and the average level of milk production. So you can look at this summary table and uh, we can see that for those different studies, when the ODR value increased from uh, the first to the third quartile of the distribution within the data set, then the associated decrease in milk production was around one kilogram per cow per day. This result being consistent across uh, the various data sets. Moreover, all those studies had the advantage of having been carried out in large to very large study sample, as you can see here, and in commercial diary form, which are representative of the field. However, those significant negative statistical association did not demonstrate a causal link between gastrointestinal nematode infection and reduced meal production. So the question is, in high ODR herds, is the lower meal production necessarily and only due to Ostertagia infection of cows? In fact, several other factors could contribute to this negative relationship between ODR and meal production. And you have here some example of different factors which affect at the same time ODR value and meal production without establishing any causality. So when questioning this causality, we can wonder what could be the expected increase in milk production after antelmantic treatment, especially in high ODR herds. So we can look at other studies assessing the milk production response after antelmantic treatment according to different ODR values. So we can look again at this summary table where milk production responses are compared between high ODR herds and low ODR herds. First of all, in those two studies carried out in Canada and France, we can see that the milk production responses were not significantly different between high and low ODR herds. But these studies was carried out in herds with limited outdoor exposure. And this one with a very small study sample, only 25 herds. On the contrary, here we have a study where um, uh, the effect of treatment was uh, significantly higher in high ODR herds. But after this great effect, the next greatest effect was obtained in the opposite category of herds, that is to say in herds with a very low ODR. And in this study, the effect of treatment was negative. That is to say that we observed a decrease in milk production after antelmantic treatment, this decrease being significantly higher in high ODR herds. 
And in this last study, several thresholds of ODR values were tested on the same data set. We can see here that the threshold 0 0.9 could be seen as interesting, even if uh, the discriminative power was very low, that is to say that the difference between those two make production responses were not very, was not very important. And the relationship between the ODR value and the mere production response was not linear, because as you can see here, for the threshold 0 0.7 and 1, we obtain exactly the opposite effect of the expected effect, because the mill production response was higher here and here, that is to say, in low ODR herds. So several authors um, suggested that this predictive value of the built on clinic ODR might be improved if the ODR was combined with on-farm analysis of management factors. So first, we tried to combine the dual tank milk ostertagia ODR value with the tech, that is to say the time of effective contact with L3 before the first calving. And as you can see here, we showed that the milk production response was better in herds characterized by a low tech and a high ODR compared to herds only characterized by a low tech, whatever the value of the ODR. And next, we tried to combine the ODR value with the tech and the percentage of grazed grass in the diet. And you can see here that the best meal production response was obtained in high pasturing herds with a high ODR and a low tech compared to high pasturing herds only characterized by a low tech. So those results suggest that this combination could be very interesting to uh, have to improve the predictive value of the ODR. But here, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that when we combine several indicators, then the number of herds considered in the sample is greatly reduced. So the level of evidence automatically goes down. So <clears throat> what could be the other limits of those studies assessing the predictive value of the built on milk ODR for the milk production response? Those studies were often based on a single ODR value measured at a given time. But we know that the built on milk ODR value can vary over time and particularly during the autumn period. So further questions are, is there an optimal date for built on milk sampling and ostertagia ODR measurement? That is to say, a date with the best predictive power of the ODR measurement performed? Or can this predictive power be improved by combining several ODR values from mink samples taken at different times? So we tried to answer those questions using built on milk ostertagia uh, measured fortnightly uh, from the 1st of October until the date of treatment here. Nine to seven built out milk ODR values were obtained per herd. And thanks to this entomantic treatment and those production milk data, we were able to assess the milk production response after entomantic treatment according to several ODR values measured at different times. Those several ODR values were taken into account either independently of each other. For example, we consider the ODR at the beginning of October or November or uh, at the time of treatment or taken into account in combination. For example, we consider the average of several Ostertagia ODR values or observation of several ODR values higher than a given threshold. So 14 ways of taking uh, those ODR values into account were tested, and each time with four different thresholds, as you can see here. So finally, 56 variables were tested. And the main result is that none of these 56 variables were able to predict correctly 
the milk production response after automatic treatment. So to conclude, we can suggest that the Blotank milk ostertage out there cannot alone reliably quantify milk production losses due to GI and infection. In fact, the impact of GIN on milk production depends on at least those three factors, resilience to infection, resistance, and exposure to parasites. The Bultantmik Ostertaja ELISA can be a good reflection of resilience or resistance. And regarding the exposure, we can consider that uh, this ELISA could be a good reflection of the herd exposure to GIN. In fact, significant statistical association were found between ODL values and duration and access to pasture and whole herd treatment. However, in all those studies, when we look at the coefficients of the models, we can see that they are not very high, very important. And we have to keep in mind that Sanchez and Doe highlighted that after controlling for cow exposure to pasture and whole herd treatment, a large amount of the variation of the full ODL was not explained by factors in this study. So even for that factor, we can't be totally sure that uh, the Ostertagia ELISA is a perfect reflection of the exposure to GIN. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any question. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, well done. So the most voted question is uh, in the Ostertagia ELISA, is there a cross reaction with the other elements? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, there are some papers um, uh, showing that there, is, there are cross re reaction with uh, fasciola hepatica, mm -hmm. and this is uh, one of the reasons explaining why, why we can question the causality between ostertagia and reduced milk production, as of course fasciola hepatica can also induce milk production losses. Mm 